the animals all gathered. Now, the animals are also id representations from the Freudian perspective, and the id is the part of your psyche from the Freudian perspective that's animalistic and, and, and full of, of, of implicit drives, sexual and aggressive in particular, as far as Freud was concerned. And that's because those two drives, say, unlike thirst or hunger, are much more difficult to integrate into proper social being and tend to be excluded and left unconscious. And so a lot of Freudian psychology, and I would say psychology in general, is focused on the integration of sexual impulses and aggressive impulses into the psyche. I would also add to that anxiety, because anxiety is also a major problem, anxiety and, and negative emotion that's pain-like is also a major problem for people. And so the animals represent those id-like impulses that have to be organized hierarchically before you can become an integrated being in precisely the Piagetian manner, right? Because Piaget would say, well, the child comes into the world with reflexes, and maybe a more modern psychologist would also con concentrate on the implicit motivations, and those have to be organized inside the child into some kind of hierarchy of unity before the child can organize him or herself into the broader unity of the state, and that's basically what's being represented here. And so, so Zazu, the eyes of the king, comes to check out the king, and that's, uh, what's his name? What's the king's name? Mufasa, yeah, and he's a very regal-looking person, uh, lion, and he stands up straight and tall, and that means that he's high in serotonin because serotonin governs postural flexion, and if so, if you're dominant and near the top of hierarchies, you tend to expand so that you look bigger than, than you could if you shrunk down, and so if you're a low dominant person, you wander around like this so that you look small and weak, and you don't pose a threat to anybody, but if you're at the top, you expand yourself so that you can command the space. And that's why he has that particular kind of regal posture. And if you look at his facial expression, you see that it's quite severe. It, like he's, he's capable of kindness, but he's also harsh and judgmental. And that's what society is like. That's what the superego is like. And what that means is that he's integrated his aggression. And I've seen this happen in my clinical clients when they come in and they're too agreeable. They look like Simba looks later in the movie when he's an adolescent. And, He's sort of like a deer in the headlights. Everything is coming in and nothing is coming out. But when the person integrates their shadow and gets the aggressive part of themselves integrated into their personality, their faces harden. And if you look at people, you can tell because the people who are too agreeable look childlike and innocent. And the people who, well, a hyper aggressive person will look, you know, mean and cruel. But uh, let's see if that's good. That's still working. So, uh, but I've seen people's face changes, change face change in the course of therapy, uh, men and women. So, and what happens is they start to look more mature and it's, it's more like they're, they're judging the world as well as interacting with it properly once they integrate that more disagreeable part of them. It's very, very necessary. And that's part of the incorporation of the Jungian shadow or the incorporation of the unconscious from a Freudian perspective. But old Musa, Musafa there, he's already got that. Uh, he's already got that covered. So, and he's capable, like, obviously, he can smile, and he's full, ca ca capable of the full range of expressions, but he's a tough-looking character.